In one of my videos, when I talked about how to get any background like for free, I got comments like this talking about copyright and stealing. And those comments are valid. That is why in this video, I'm going to show you how to get any background like and make it your own. And you don't have to worry about copyright or stealing it. I'm also going to show you how you can apply that background to your image inside of Photoshop. So if you just come to any website, it can be Instagram, it can be Pinterest. So let's say you like this background right here and you want to use it for your own image. So I've already downloaded this image. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come to firefly.adobe.com. Now for here, you can put any prompt, but I'm going to put background and hit generate. Okay, from here, pick this attention. What we are going to do, we are going to change it from landscape to portraits and from art to photos. And this place that says composition reference, we are going to upload that image you downloaded from Pinterest. That is this image right here. We are going to upload it to this reference right here. So I'm going to look for that image in my folder. This is the image right here. I'm just going to drag and drop it to this reference right here. I'm just going to upload. Then I'm going to scroll the way down to this star. I'm also going to upload that same image right here as a star. So I'm going to come to my file again, drag and drop it to the reference. And for the prompt, I'm just going to write generate similar and hit generate. Now from here, it's just going to generate similar images for us. Now you can see we have four versions. This is the first version, the second version, the third version, the fourth version. So if you don't like anyone, you can hit on generate again. It's going to generate another version for you. So you can see the other options it gave us, but I've already downloaded one which I really like, which is this one right here. So this is the one I generated with Adobe Firefly. But if I zoom in, you can see it's kind of blurry and the quality is not good. Now this is how you enhance the image and fix it and make it look even more realistic and usable. All you have to do is come to chargetp.com and upload that image and give it this prompt, enhance this image and make it look realistic. So chargetp is going to create this image for you. You can see this one right here looks more realistic and you can choose to edit it if you want to edit it. So if you want to edit it, just click on it and click on this edit right here and just paint where you want to edit and tell ChatGTP to add or remove something for you. But I've already done that. I just told ChatGTP to add flying fabrics for me. You can see it right here, flying fabrics. And this is the result I got. All right. So I just downloaded this image on my laptop right now. So this is the ChatGTP result right here. So automatically, we've made our own version of that image. So we're not just telling that particular background, we're actually copying it and make it our own. So with this, you don't have to worry about copyrights because you can use this and nobody is going to say you steal their background or you copy their image. Now, let me show you how to actually use this background for your own image if you want to use it. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open this image inside of Photoshop. So I'm just going to right click, click on open with, and click on Photoshop. Now, once I open this picture inside of Photoshop, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove this subject. So I'll pick my selection brush tool and just paint on where I want to remove, like so. All right. And just click on generative fill and just hit generate. All right. So we have two versions. This is the first version, the second version, the third version. So I think this first version works. I'm going to use this one. But if you don't like any one, you can try to hit on generate again. It's going to generate more for you. So let's just use this one right here. All right, so I'm going to create a stamp visible here. I'll press my command option shift E and just save this image as JPEG to my laptop. So I'm going to save it by pressing my command option shift S. Click on save and just save it right here. All right, now let me show you how to apply this background to your own image and even make it look more realistic. So once I open the image, I want to use it for inside of Photoshop. After I do my screen touching and all that, I'm just going to remove the subject from the background. So I'm going to click on my quick selection tool. Once I click on my quick selection tool, I'm going to click on this drawbar icon and make sure cloud is selected for a more detailed selection. After that, I'm going to click on select subject. It's just going to select our subject for us. What I'm going to do for me, I'm just going to invert it so that the background is going to be selected. I'm pressing on command shift I. Once I invert it, I'm going to press on command J to cut out the subject from the background. So right now, if I hide all my subject layer, you can see we have just the background. Now for me, what I'm going to do let me just rename this one subject so you can understand better and rename this one background. Now with my subject layer selected, 
instead of making a selection again from scratch, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to bring back that selection by pressing on command and click on this thumbnail of the background to bring back the selection. So press control or command and click on the thumbnail to bring back the selection. Now once we bring back the selection, what are we going to do? We are going to invert it again. This time, make sure our subject is selected. And to invert, remember, I press now command shift I eh? to invert. Now once we invert it, instead of just removing the subject from the background or cutting out the subject from the background, we are going to hide it. And to hide it, we are going to use a layer mask. So once I invert it, I'm not going to add a layer mask right here. So instead of removing the subject, I've hide the subject. What I'm going to do from here, I'm going to click on the background and just drag it below my subject layer. Now, I'm just going to drag and drop the background which I want to use right now to this image, which is this background right here. So I'm going to come to my finder and just look for that image. So this is the background right here. I'm just going to drag and drop it on top of my layer and just resize it like so. All right, so let's work for me. I want to hit OK. So if you have something like this, like just hiding everything, make sure it's below the subject layer. All right, so bring it down below the subject layer. All right. Now, for me, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to flip it. So I'll press Command C and just flip it to make it match well, to make it look even more better. So I feel like this works for me. I want to hit good. What I'm going to do from here, I'm going to change the color to fit the outfit this um, subject is wearing. Now, to change the color, I'm going to press up Command U to bring the hue and saturation on top of this ChatGTP image. And I'm just going to move the master until I feel I have color I want. So I think this color, this is the color I'm looking for. This color works for me. So I can play with the brightness and just make it look good. So I think like this actually works. I'll hit OK. So we'll change the color to match the outfit the subject is wearing. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to blur it to make it look even more realistic. So I'm going to come to Filter, click on Blur Gallery, and click on Parts Blur right here. The reason why I use part blur is so that I can just make the blur look dynamic and make it look really, really good. Please pay close attention. What I'm going to do from here, instead of using basic, I'm going to use Ray Sync Flash. So let this work for me. All right, so let's just move it and just play with it and see. Okay, I think like this looks good for me. Now you can play with the speed. You can move the speed up if you want to do that. Or you can reduce the speed. You can play with the temper or reduce the tempo. So let me just reduce it a little bit and just add a little bit of speed. All right, so I think like this works for me. Now for me, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit OK. Now, after that, I'm just going to duplicate this ChatGTP image by pressing on Command J. After I duplicate it, I'm going to move it above my subject layer. Once I move it above my subject layer, I'm just going to pin it to this subject layer by holding Option or Alternate. And go to show this clipping icon. I'm just going to clip it. Once I clip it, I'm going to add a layer mask. Now, once I add a white layer mask, I'm going to pick my normal brush tool, make sure my foreground color is set to black. With a soft one brush, I'm just going to paint to reveal the subject again. All right. So I think like this works for me. All right. So you can see how good it's looking. Now, let me just group everything I've done so you can see the before and the after. This is the before and the after. The before. In the after. So this is how you can steal any background and avoid copyrights because we've already turned it to our own. So you can do this for any type of background at all and use it for your own image. And if you enjoyed this video, I believe you are going to enjoy this video right here because I explained how you can actually remove software for your background and change your background in details. So check out that video. I'll see you guys in my next one. Stay creative.